What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as the D365Geek, and today we are talking about Power Automate and the CDS Actions, and we're now talking about the CDS Action Update a Record. So Update a Record allows you to pass in a DUID or a record identifier into a action, and then you can update the record um, as you see fit based on that uh, DUID that you passed in. So let's take a look at it. I'm in Power Automate here. I have a CDS triggered flow, and this trigger is when a record is selected. So it's like the um, on-demand workflows that we are we are previously used to. Uh, I've covered this in a previous video. Um, this is running on the accounts record. I'm going to add a new step. I'm going to click on Common Data Service, and this one down here says Update a Record. So when I go to update a record, I'm asked for a couple of things. I'm asked for an environment, I'm asked for the entity name, and I'm also asked for the record identifier. So in this instance, I'm going to choose uh, my Matt's demo environment. I could also choose current environments, and that would make it easier for deploying this solution um, to another environment, um, which is actually probably the recommended thing to do. Uh, but you can specify a specific environment, which is handy in case you need to do uh, any cross-environment updating. So maybe you have a, um, a set of data in one environment, uh, say a sort of a sandbox environment or a development environment and you actually want to push that data into another environment so you can do testing on it, you can do it this way. Um, the entity name, so this is the name of the entity that we want to update, so in this instance we're going to choose accounts and then we need the record identifier. So the record identifier is the DUID uh, and that's the way you find the, uh, the record itself. So in this instance, um, in my dynamic content, I've got account and account says unique identifier of the account. So the record identifier of the DUID is the singular name for the entity that you're running on. So if it was uh, on quotes, it would be quote. If it's on accounts, it's on account. If it's on contacts, it's on contact. It's called contact. So we choose uh, that there and that goes into the direct content. Now you'll see um, that as soon as we chose the entity name, it did start to load a list of the um, uh, load a list of the fields that I can update. Uh, by default, it's show me account name. But if I click on show advanced options, I can actually see all of the fields on the account. This is not only all the fields on the account form, but all the fields on the account. So we have address two in here and all those values. Um, <coughs> We have all sorts of data. Oh, this is a new one. Created by IP address and created by username. I've not seen the IP address one in there before. That is an interesting field to know. Uh, I wonder why that's been added to uh, CDS and modified by IP address. Interesting. You learn something new every day. Um, but yeah, you can update any of the fields in this. Um, in this record, what I am going to do is I am actually going to update the account name so it's nice and easy for us to see. So um, the account name is going to be uh, Matt's Awesome Company, because that's an awesome name. Uh, and we will test this out. So we will hit save. Once that's saved, I will flick over to my Dynamics environment, my CDS environment. We'll reconnect because we've disconnected. Uh, and we have a list of our accounts down here. So we've got this one that says, uh, it's called D365 uh, Geek Corp. Uh, I'm gonna change that name. So in there, I'm gonna select the record. I'll go up to the ellipsis, or the three dots, and we'll hit uh, flow. And then we'll say uh, CDS trigger flow. So that's the name of the flow here. We'll click to run it. It'll pop up in a little window. We can select run flow, click done. Um, it'll go off, it'll run in the background. And if I unselect this and click refresh, we now see Matt's awesome company. This was the one um, that was previously known as D365 Geek Corp, I think. Uh, and now it's called Matt's awesome company. Uh, if I've got auditing on, we can actually see that. So we'll just take a look at that if I can find the word audit history, there we go. Um, but yeah, it's as easy as that, just um, 
pass in the druid and then you can update any record that you want. And uh, this is taking a little while. That's interesting. Um, let's see if it's looking off it fixes it. Or refreshing the page. I just wanted to confirm that name change. Oh, I don't have any uh, connections. Uh, audit history. I potentially don't have auditing turned on in this environment anyway, but uh, I just wanted to show you that. But yeah, if we go back to the main main wrist, there, there was a two D three six five deeks in here. There's now only one that Matt's awesome company, and there we have it. So that is an easy way to use the um, one uh, easy way to use the update a record entry. So you can update it with any value. So you could pull in values from other systems. Um, you could um, update telephone numbers. You could pull in Twitter account uh, details and stuff like that and update the account record with them. So there we have it. Um, what do you guys think? Um, I use this all the time because I'm constantly doing flows to update stuff. So this is part of my day-to-day day-to-day um, sort of, you know, tool set that I use but as always I'd like to know what you guys are using this for let me know in the comments down below uh, if you like this video please like and please share it with your friends it's always appreciated if you've not already please subscribe to my youtube channel and I'll see you next time